Take your Bibles tonight, turn with me to the book of Romans, Romans the 8th chapter, just a couple of very familiar passages of Scripture in Romans the 8th chapter in the book of 2 Corinthians, uh, the 12th chapter. Romans the 8th chapter, of course, you know that verse. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. I, I just have to keep coming back to this verse over and over again. I need this in my life. Uh, you know, I get, uh, I'm just like you are. I get discouraging reports every now and then. And uh, I just need to keep reminding myself that God is going to make all these things work together uh, for good that happen in our lives. And then in 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapters for this thing, I besought the Lord thrice. And here's the Apostle Paul, and he has a thorn in the flesh, something that afflicts him, something that makes it difficult for him. And he says, uh, I, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. And then Paul says, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me. And then in the book of Revelation, the third chapter in verse 21, the Bible says, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me at my throne, even also as I overcame, and am set down with the Father in his throne. Someone has said this, Christians are at their very best when times are at their very worst. And I've certainly found that to be true over the years as I've uh, ministered to many hundreds and hundreds of people uh, up and down the land that when uh, things really get bad and, and I've seen some folks go through some horrendous things and boy, I'll tell you, it's, uh, the Christian, when the real bad things happen, it's just amazing how uh, they manifest Christ in their lives. But Christians are at their best when times get at the worst. And uh, we find this to be a true principle in the lives of the prophets as well. And as we consider the life of Elijah and Jeremiah and Daniel and others, we remember that they were always at their very best when the times got very worse. And so as we look at their lives, we recognize that God wants us to have victory even when the disappointments come in our life. God wants us to have the victory in our life. Now the question is, if we're living for the Lord and we're serving Him, why in the world do disappointments come into our life? You would think we would be exempt from that. After all, we're on God's side and He's on our side and you'd think we'd just be free of any kind of problem, wouldn't you? But that's not the way it works out. Disappointments come because uh, there are folks other than believers that are living in this world. Not everybody's in this world is a believer. And so we're going to have lots of disappointments. The Supreme Court of the United States certainly disappointed us today, didn't it? And uh, what a disappointment to see those kind of rulings come down. And as we watch the news day after day, it just, the news doesn't get any better. It just keeps getting worse and worse. And we just, it's like we're, you know, uh, we're on a slippery slope and, and, and this nation is just going down, down so rapidly. It's unbelievable. And the reason for that is because we, there are people out there that don't believe the Bible. They don't believe the Word of God. They don't believe in God even. And, uh, and so that's why we have these disappointments. And so uh, as we go through life, uh, you're going to find that people fail you. By the way, even Christians can fail you. Uh, Christians can disappoint you. In fact, some of the greatest disappointments come to us from those that we love the most and the ones that have been close to us and close to the Lord. And there's some folks who will just flat out lie to you. Uh, they, <laughs> you know, when the, uh, I say there's some people when the truth would be easier to tell, they tell a lie uh, and then squirm trying to figure out how to get out of it. And then there are others who are very critical, have a very critical spirit. And, and even though you're laboring and doing the best you know how to do, and, and, uh, but there's always someone there that's ready to uh, pounce on you and to criticize you even though you're doing your best. But sometimes disappointments come simply because we're doing what is right. You know, when you take a positive stand for the Lord uh, and, and, uh, and you stand with the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you're going to meet strife, my friends. Uh, in Matthew, the fifth chapter, the Bible says this, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' uh, sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you uh, for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. So persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And so sometimes we're disappointed because uh, we're just doing God's will, and doing God's will will cause people to come against us. And then sometimes we're disappointed because of circumstances over which we have no control. 
Uh, there are just some things that, <laughs> that we, there's nothing we can do about what's happening. We can't control the weather. We can't control uh, natural disasters. We can't tr control events. We can't control people around us. We have no control over that. And sometimes we're disappointed because of things that we can't control. Then sometimes we're disappointed because of our own weakness and our own failing. And uh, I've been following this story in the news about Miss Paula Dean, you know, and, and she got on television today, and my, I didn't get to see this. My wife was telling me this this evening, and she said, you know, she said, every one of us have had a slip of the tongue. We've all said things we shouldn't have said. And she says, any one of you that has never done that, go ahead and throw the first stone, hit me in the head with it. And, uh, you know, I didn't see stones flying, did you? We've all done that. And uh, we disappoint ourselves because our flesh will fail us. And uh, Paul spoke of that in Romans 7. He says, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. And so uh, even though you may be born again and you're living for the Lord, You'll disappoint yourself because of the weakness of your own flesh. Now, normally we think of disappointments in a very negative way, but I want you to look at the disappointments of life tonight in a different view. I want you to look at them in a positive view. Uh, uh, disappointments, uh, defeat, and failings can be a positive force in your life because they can draw you actually closer to the Lord, you see. Uh, on the other side of the coin, when uh, we are self-sufficient, and everything is going well, and there's no problems in our life, we tend to become less aware of the presence of God. It's when we go through the trials that we sense God's presence with us. And so the truth of the matter is, we actually need disappointments in our life. We need those times of difficulty in our life because those times are used by God to draw us closer to Him. We can find victory over disappointments when we remember that there have been others who were victorious in times of disappointment. You know, God's greatest people suffered disappointing things. Think about Moses uh, when he was there up on the mountain and uh, he's coming back down and what are the children of Israel doing? Oh my, they have made a golden craft, calf and they're dancing around it and bowing down to it and saying this is the God that brought us out of the land of Egypt. My, how disappointed he must have been. Uh, he was disappointed in the nation of Israel. But he disappointed himself uh, when he disobeyed God and God told him to speak to the rock. And in anger, he struck the rock. He was a disappointment to himself. But I'll tell you what, he was still victorious. And the Bible tells us in the New Testament, Hebrews 11th chapter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of, uh, of sin for a season. He was victorious, you see. Jeremiah suffered. He was called of God to preach to a backsliding people. And uh, he was, uh, you know, poor old Jeremiah, he was a weeping prophet. Uh, he cried all the time. He just had a very tender heart. And his heart broke for the people that he was ministering to. And in Jeremiah, the ninth chapter of the Bible says, Oh, that my head were waters and mine eyes fountains of tears, that I might weep day and night uh, for the uh, slain of the, daughters of, my, uh, of the daughter of my people. Uh, so uh, today there's not much weeping today, is there? Not much weeping about sin today and about sinners today. But Jeremiah was a weeping man. His heart was heavy. There was disappointment, but he had victory over his disappointments. And I think about Paul, uh, who after being such a faithful servant of God and going through all of the trials that he went through to come down near the end of his life and to have to write this to Timothy, for Demas has forsaken me. Having loved this present world, he's departed unto Thessalonica, Cretans to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia, Alexander, the coppersmith, did me much evil. And so as after Paul had done all he had done, establishing churches, preaching the gospel, winning souls, uh, his own friends forsook him. What a disappointment. And so uh, God stood by these men of old, and if God stood by them in their hour of disappointment, I want you to know something. God will stand by you in your hour of disappointment. And you can win over failures in your own life and uh, the disappointments in your life. Here's how you win over it. You just keep on serving God, just like that couple we talked about just a moment ago. Their little three-year-old girl's taken away from it. They just said, we're just going to keep on serving God. 
And that's how you win in this thing. I like what Jesus said. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me while the day is. The night cometh when no man can work. And so even though Jesus was barraged with all kinds of accusations and, and there were those that hated him, they hated him so much that they called for his crucifixion, and yet he was determined to continue to serve God. And so, uh, uh, you know, the truth of the matter is that that's not what people do, though, most of the time. When they hit the disappointments of their life, uh, they want to quit. And I, I tell you, I, could, I used to be able to count them on one hand, then two hands, and then I, I ran out of fingers and toes, and I can't count them anymore. The people that I've known over the years who have hit a disappointing place in life and then just quit, quit, their, quit teaching a class, quit going to church, quit serving God, just took, a, took another spin in their life because of some disappointment. Listen, when the disappointment comes, that's not the time to quit. That's the time to keep on serving God, my friend. Uh, don't quit reading your Bible. Don't quit praying. Don't quit soul winning. Don't quit going to church. But instead, let, let disappointments, instead of letting them cause us to quit, let them motivate us uh, to continue to serve. Uh, I, I, I need to know where my weaknesses are. And uh, so when I fail, uh, it causes me to depend on God. It causes me to recognize, hey, there's a weakness in your life. You'd better be depending on God, my friend. And as I depend more upon God, guess what? I'm drawn into a closer relationship with Him. And what happens? I become stronger. And so if it wasn't for the disappointment, if it wasn't for the failure, I'd never get stronger. And so use them to your advantage. As, as I deal with my own failings, it gives me a better understanding of what others are going through. You know, Paul was very aware of his own weakness. He talked very candidly about it and his own failings. He talked about that. And when he wrote his letter to Philemon, he begged for consideration for a slave who had wronged his master. And Paul's own failings caused him uh, to have compassion for this, this man who had gone uh, by the wayside, you see. And so when you experience disappointments, it can help you to see the need in someone else's life. And I can have victory in disappointments simply just by having faith in God. It's important to know your faith before the dark day comes, my friend, and know that victory comes before, from the Lord. Not only should we know our faith, but we should feed our faith. This is where I find a lot of people miss the mark today. They're not feeding their faith. They're filling their minds with the things of the world. They're all involved in the latest trends and fashions and movies and television programs and all of that kind of stuff and they neglect the feeding of their mind on the things of the Lord. We certainly need to feed our faith. We need to feed our faith with the Word of God. So when faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. We ought to feed our faith by prayer. Here are the two. You have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive, that your joy may be full, the Scripture said. You ought to feed your faith with meditation. First Timothy says, Meditate on the things and give thyself wholly to them, that uh, uh, thy profiting may appear to all. You need to know your faith. You need to feed your faith. But let me tell you, you need to use your faith. That is, you ought to set out to serve God by faith. John said it this way in 1 John 5, verse 4, for, what, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. I don't know what you might be facing in life tonight or what you may face in the near future, but I do know this. If you'll remain faithful to God through the disappointment time, you'll come out on the winning side every single time.